Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles. Thank you for joining us. I'm coming to you from an altitude of 5,280 feet through iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Facebook, whatever way you listen to this. We want to encourage you to please make sure to hit subscribe. You never want to miss any Mile High Tick. Every episode is for you to reach more people and with the message of chiropractic. That being said, also not only hit subscribe, but clear your calendar from Mile High 2020, August 20th to 23rd. We look forward to seeing you on higher ground. Each year, Mile High gets better and better. Be sure to join us live in the Mile High State, August 20th to 23rd. If you have not registered already, do so, because you're going to want to see the guests that we have tonight, not today, not only on the podcast, but also live at Mile High. Dr. Frank Hahn will be just joining us today. He's one of my favorite people in chiropractic. He gives so much to chiropractic, one through the IFCO, two through Sherman College serving on their board of trustees, uh, three in Shubal Vision Elite, Four, within his own practice, every day changing spines and lives and minds with the power of chiropractic and the power of people healing from within. So uh, a, a Sherman College graduate, welcome to the podcast, Dr. Frank Hahn. Ooh, that was one of the best intros I've ever had. Danny, thank you very much. <laughs> I love it. Hey, well, you deserve the best. Thank you, uh, I do. <laughs> thank you so much for all that you do and give to chiropractic. I know even yesterday, mm -hmm. and I left this place that you give out, which is the Garden State Chiropractic Society, even yesterday you were doing things for chiropractic uh, with the GSCS. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm a board member also of the GSCS. Uh, and the busy people always are constantly working. The successful people are always constantly working. Yesterday, we put together a program. Uh, it, it took a while to put this program together. It was a philosophy jam session. And we had the likes of Jim Healy, Mark Olstein, uh, Mark Romano. Uh, so, so some great speakers on the platform. And all we did was we had like a panel discussion. The Garden State members uh, showed up. There was a lot of them there. And we just had a, a jam session all day long talking about philosophy, talking about chiropractic, talking about practice philosophy, anything that we want to discuss, we just talked about. It was about maybe a six-hour day, so we, we got a lot accomplished. Well, and see, there's an example is what more can you do for chiropractic? And actually, we were talking about this before we went, uh, started this podcast about giving and how, mm -hmm. how much, um, you know, things are going on and there's opportunities we're involved with, and you're... Uh, Favorite quote, the act of giving back is the single most important investment you will ever make. Um, and I, you're a person that gives back. You live that. Mm -hmm, absolutely. I, I love giving back to the profession. It's given me an abundance. There's so many stories that, that we could share about that. Uh, the Garden State Chiropractic Society is one of my, my uh, major organizations that, that I'm affiliated with because they give back tremendously. We started up a... a local soup kitchen in uh, or now we started up a local soup kitchen uh, a soup kitchen where we check people's spines called chiropractic for humanity every single thursday of every week we have a chiropractor down there checking people's spines and we've been doing that for about 17 years now it, 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 that, that's just one thing we have an internship program through the garden state and the undergrad students come into one of our offices and we mentor this student all the way through chiropractic college and beyond that it was done for me, so I'm sort of like paying it forward and giving it back. I think it's, we're about maybe 12 or 13 students now that we sent off to Cairo School so far. Wow, that's exciting. Now, um, you had the, uh, how did you find your way into, let's help people get to know you a little bit ah, more. How great, did you great. find your way into the chiropractic world? Ah, great question. I don't get this question asked often. So I used to work for, a, of all things, a home health care company mixing medications back, back in the day. And that was my job. I, I was, you know, I was a very good mixer. <laughs> and my cousin, who also worked for the company, got the, uh, into a car accident. Uh, he was actually the one delivering the medications and hospital equipment. And he had to go see a chiropractor. So I was the one to take him to the chiropractor. And the chiropractor we took him to, his name was Dr. Robert Berkowitz. 
Bob Berkowitz. Some people know him, some people don't. He's a long time a Sherman alum, board of trustee member for a long time, Garden State member, ICO member. And he introduced chiropractic to us, although uh, my cousin was at the time getting treated, I called it, uh, for his chiropractic concerns. And then him and Dr. Gary Rushing explained chiropractic to us. And through the visits, I learned more and more about this thing called chiropractic and discovered that it was pretty awesome, pretty cool. And it was much more interesting than what I was doing. Uh, so they, shared, they said, well, you can become a chiropractor too. You just have to take classes, go to school for this amount of years. Uh, and then when you come out, you can do exactly what I'm doing. Does that sound simple to you? And I said, what, explain chiropractic the way that you did to others? Uh, I, I just said it was so simple, made, it clicked for me, made sense, and from there it just took off and I made my way to Sherman College. That, that's another story of many, many interesting stories. I'm not sure where you wanna go on this particular podcast, but we'll, I'll go anywhere you like. Well, I, I find it really interesting to find how people find their way into chiropractic, and mm -hmm. usually it's the simplest things like yeah. someone just telling them about chiropractic and seeing, well, this is something, you know, they're, they're looking for a new possibility in their life because we, one of the things we want to see is we know that the world needs more chiropractors. We can't possibly take care of everybody, which, you know, there's no shortage of spines distorted. Uh, we, we, there's, there's plenty of people that need what we have to have. Uh, and part of that is um, having more people in your office. So, uh, when you're teaching people about chiropractic, mm -hmm. um, since what you just shared is really about a person teaching you about chiropractic, do you have a particular mindset about teaching people about chiropractic? Yes, so this evolved over the, the years, but my mindset is, I try to think about people, the, the long-term vision, like 10 years under chiropractic care, 15 years under chiropractic care, and beyond that. And so my mindset is I want the person to, to become a lifelong practice member who stays, pays, and refers in their loved ones. That's the main thing that I teach to people. So everything I educate people about in the office is with that intention. Uh, so I'm not talking for crisis care. I'm not even talking for uh, initial, uh, whatever the catalyst that drove them into the office. I, I transition them over to a long-term patient and they bring in their family members and it happens all the time. Uh, right. Every single person walks into the office. Uh, I teach them these principles about chiropractic. And for some reason, Danny, they get it just like I did. And now they refer in their, their spouse and their loved ones, which usually is their children if they have them. Well, and, and that's really important. It's focusing mm -hmm. on what it is that you're communicating uh, about chiropractic. And what I find is that since so few people actually have an understanding of what it is, it stands out. They're often like, this is the first time I've heard this. How come no one's told me this? Mm -hmm. Ab absolutely. And I get this all the time. When I teach them about how the body works and then how the body breaks down and how a chiropractor can help them, they say, hmm, that, that's unusual. I, I never even thought about it in those terms before. And by right. the way, that, that, that's a good outline that I just shared with those three speaking points, how the body works, how the body breaks down, and how a chiropractor can help. You can develop a talk for the, your whole entire career just around those three speaking points. If you're yep. doing, like, let's say, like a, like a dinner with the doc program or, or something that, that you're doing an hour-long uh, session with the people, uh, a lay lecture or anything like that, an orientation, you just give those three speaking points 20 minutes on, on each topic and you're good to go. Uh, some people do like a 30 minute talk. You can do 10 minutes on each of those. Uh, I, I developed something called a 30 second description of chiropractic. So I do 10 seconds on each and it's a really great way to inform people about chiropractic. Uh, and it leads directly to an appointment. So I teach this to a lot of other chiropractors, uh, Garden State members, Shubal Vision Elite members you mentioned, uh, IFCO members, and the students too. Uh, do you think the audience would care to hear the 30-second talk? Sure, let's share that. Okay, yeah. So, so Danny, here's how your body works. Your brain sends messages down your spine, across your nerves, to all your body parts. As long as the signals can get through from your brain to the body parts, your body functions proper. 
sometimes the bones of your spine are going to misalign and block or interfere with those signals that are trying to get through from the brain to the body parts. That's how your body begins to break itself down. My job, the doc of chiropractic, is to locate where your misaligned spinal bones are, adjust those bones off the nerves so the signals can get through. That's how your body begins to function better. Ready to have your spine checked? And so, so that, that's, that's sort of like uh, some people call a, a 30 second talk on chiropractic, a description of chiropractic. I found that when you're outside in your community talking with people, uh, uh, wherever you are, the grocery store, in line at the movie theater, uh, I, I meet people all over the place. You have a span of attention of about maybe a minute. So you wanna try to get your description under a minute. Uh, and then if you can do that successfully and get those three speaking points across you can almost schedule a person at will. And all you need to do is maybe have your cell phone handy with an appointment calendar. I would suggest you have that, uh, have your office appointment calendar uh, synced with your cell phone. So you can just schedule a person right there and then they don't even need to call your office. That might be a tip I could share with people. Excellent, excellent. And now, now I, I, mm -hmm. I, have, I have to just pause a little bit. All right. um, I, I can't, I, I, it'd be remiss to not mention your quality shirtwear, um, oh. <laughs> which is that if people are listening to this, they can't see it, but they may be watching it um, either way, but that you're wearing a mile high shirt. And it made oh, me think easy. of another area of contribution that you have done, added to value to the chiropractic profession, which is the IFCO TV. Oh, yeah. IFCO um, TV. And, you know, IFCO TV uh, began uh, alongside mile high. I, I had the privilege of being the first guest ever in the history of Mile High of uh, IFCO TV, so that, that's uh, uh, an honor that I, I, I proudly announce. So um, uh, <laughs> with that, um, and was you know as I said, um, IFCO TV just started just before the first uh, Mile High event, um, which was great. Now with that, having done IFCO TV for so many years and interviewed so many people. Um, and you have to say the favor, but what are some people that you interviewed that were highlights over those years? Well, thank you for sharing about that, Danny. And, and let's uh, kind of, it's interesting how things are playing out now. It's eight years later. Um, it's, it's uh, we're, we're the same thing as mile high. Eight, I think eight years <laughs> is, is right. it now? Yeah. So here's how it's coming full circle. You were the very first guest on Mile High. I'm going to call you my favorite guest. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Danny Ola's favorite guest. But here's how it's coming full circle. You created Mile High with, with um, an, an awesome vision, which was definitely needed for the center of, of the country. They, they had nothing there. They had right. nothing. And, and you started with maybe uh, an intention of having some people gather around, and yeah. now you blew it up, and maybe 1,000 people are showing up. Right. So Lee, Doc Liam Schubel, we always have to get his name in there. He likes when we talk about him. Doc yeah. Liam Schubel launched Schubel Vision Elite at Mile High. Uh, about go. two and a half years ago, I think it was three mile highs ago, he started Schubel Vision Elite. Uh, and so that, that was a, a great program. We may be able to get into that uh, later on. Uh, but that's how it kind of came full circle. Do you think your guests would be interested in hearing some breaking news about IFCO TV? It's sure. not been announced yet. Please. I, I, we love to break news at All our right. podcast. All right. So there is going to be a brand new co-host on IFCO TV. IFCO member, Vice President, Dr. Grant Dennis. Oh. So have you ever interviewed Dr. Grant Dennis yet? No, I have not. Okay, great. So he's another one maybe put on the list to do an interview with. He is going to be taking over. I feel it's eight years now, and you might get this feeling, Danny, down the road with Mile High. But for some reason, I, I feel like it needs some fresh blood, and we need to get some, some younger people involved in the program. And so Grant Dennis stepped up to the plate, and he's going to be taking over the hosting and maybe even co-hosting of the show, and he's going to bring it out to more of the students. And then number two, we have a, a – a chiropractor in South, South no, Mexico, who's going to be taking over the, the Latin portion of IFCO TV. And so he's creating another IFCO TV program for the Spanish speaking section of the world. Outstanding. Uh, yeah. So we, we broke that? it. Uh, his name is Abraham. Uh, oh, yeah. I, do you know Abraham? I, I always pronounce his last name improper. So I'm just going to go with Abraham from IFCO TV Latin America. Yes, he was at Mile High this past time. 
Yes, yeah, huge uh, mile high. He goes to all of the, the big events uh, representing IFCO tremendously. So I think we have two great people that are going to be co-hosting IFCO TV for the coming future and hopefully for the next few generations. Well, and that being said, who are, let's go, let's go back to that question. Who are some of the people that tend to be like your favorite guests, but like that were highlights for you to have as guests on IFCO TV over the years? Let's see, a, a, a fan favorite is all, you know, all, all the big names that we know, but uh, uh, one name comes to mind. Uh, Michael Viscarelli is always a, a great one to have on the show. He's always on fire, passionate about chiropractic. I, I really love when he's on the show. Uh, Jack Borla is another big time doc uh, who many people know. And I like talking with him because he has a different way. He's very interesting, very sharp, very, very smart, uh, but just a different style of getting his points across. Uh, completely different than Michael Viscarelli, who's super passionate, also very brilliant too. But both of those are great. And I'd probably say one last one is maybe Doc Joe Borio, another passionate, brilliant mind in chiropractic. Uh, it, it's hard to pinpoint just one, but probably those three stick out the most. And I don't like, like yourself, I've interviewed some of the top chiropractors on the planet, so I don't want to get myself in trouble for getting anybody. Or, but but right. those are probably three that, that stick out the most. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Now, now um, you also, you know, one of the things that I see so frequently uh, you do mm -hmm. is uh, refer people to chiropractic school. We just talked about it a little bit, but you're mm -hmm. commonly, regularly doing things to help people discover chiropractic as a career. Um, you serve on the Sherman College Board of Trustees, so I know that you have a big passion for people going to Sherman College, but I also know you have a big passion for people coming to chiropractors, period. Um, so, so what, what are, what, what are some of the reasons that you take some of your personal time and energy to help, uh, people find chiropractic as a career? Well, thanks for asking this question too, Dan. Uh, the internship program that we started, myself and Dr. Bob Berkowitz, I just mentioned his name a few moments ago, we thought it was really important to teach students before they get into chiropractic college, the, the, the right way to practice, how to practice successfully. We want them to experience a successful practice. It was done for me, so I wanted to pass it on to other people, but I wanted to make it even better than it was for me. So what I do is uh, I take an intern from either Rutgers or Princeton University or, or some of the other uh, schools here in, in Jersey, and I have them come in for about 180 hours, that's a, a full semester to get college credit for this, by the way. Uh, and total volunteer on our portion, uh, the students pay the school so they can get the credit for it. And some of them need this internship program uh, to graduate from their particular uh, their college, undergrad school, not graduate school, but undergrad school. And now when they go through our internship program, it's not go to the store and get some bagels or, or file this paperwork. They're actually learning the skill sets, mostly what we are teaching in the Shubal Vision Elite program, but, but we're teaching it to the, the intern who's in the office. So they come to my office each week, maybe one to two times per week, spend two to three hours with me. So, so I'm taking away my free time freedom to, to work with these students. But once they get off to chiropractic college, they feel like they're one step ahead of all the other students because they know how to run an office. They know what it takes to succeed uh, from marketing, from day one, day two, day three, working and learning how to, uh, with x-rays. Uh, they don't take x-rays and they don't check and adjust patients, but they watch and observe me from the youngest of the young, newborns, all the way up to seniors and everybody in between. And, and there's a lot of stuff, all the other office stuff that maybe some of my staff does for me. Uh, so they get involved in every aspect. Now they become leaders in the school that they attend. Most of them attend Sherman College, but a couple of them did not attend Sherman College. And I don't force them to attend Sherman College. I want them to pick the right school that's right for them. And how I determine that is I kind of let them go on their own and say, well, how do you want to practice when you get out of school? We go over all different ways to practice from family style uh, to uh, what's therapeutic and what's non-therapeutic type of practices. And so when they're picking when the style they want to practice, I'll say, okay, this school matches up best for that particular style. Uh, and you might 
say, okay, well, you should push them to Sherman College. I agree. That's the best school on, on the entire planet for the style of practice that we practice. But if a person's dead set on practicing one way, maybe their, their field chiropractor that they learned chiropractic from practiced that way in that model, and they're kind of pushing them in that direction, totally fine. But I want to let them know that there's other ways to practice. So we go over all the different ways to practice. Now, their job when they go off to chiropractic college is to help bring the other students that might not know as much as they do, bring them up. So that's where the model, no one left behind, kind of comes from. And I, I kind of started doing that when I was in Sherman College as a student. And we were studying for boards and some people were getting it and some people were kind of falling behind a little bit. I said, well, there's no reason why anybody should fall behind. Let's group study and, and knock this out so nobody's gonna be left behind. And I kept on saying that, that mantra all along and it kind of stuck with me throughout the years. And now I use it in Shubal Vision Elite System where I'm helping other chiropractors along with some uh, uh, Liam Shubal and Judd O'Grady to to bring other chiropractors uh, up where we are. Excellent, excellent. You know, again, I, I say frequently that there that there's the world needs more chiropractors for sure. Mm -hmm. There, that's 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 needed, and the world needs more chiropractors because there's a lot of people with spines that can be happier. Um, there's no shortage of that now. Mm -hmm. Also, ones who practice with our mindset and our idea about what chiropractic is, because if we don't share it with other chiropractors, Danny, th nobody's going to ever know about it. You know, we, we right. know that we were privileged because uh, we went to Sherman College and we spent some time with Dr. Reggie Gold, one of my, my favorite all time. Actually, I'm going to say Reggie Gold was my favorite person I, I interviewed. I had the opportunity to do that, but not with ISCO TV as a student in Sherman College for a research project. Uh -huh. And I think that, and that's still out there somewhere. I think Simon Sinek figured it out and found it somewhere in, in the archives of the Sherman College Library. I said, how the heck did you find this? I didn't even know it was still in existence. And so now he uh, pushed it out there on, on his programs and you can probably find it on YouTube now, but I had the opportunity to interview Dr. Reggie Gold and talk with him for about an hour. One of the greatest uh, talks I ever um, had with somebody and it really opened my eyes to chiropractic pretty big time too in, in the way that we practice. And that was, I didn't know, but that was like the groundbreaking moment when maybe ICO TV was planted into my head uh, that this is something that was needed. Yes, excellent, excellent. Now, now another is bringing back to patient education. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in the digital world today, which we're coming across a podcast now, recording this on video, there's lots of online resources uh, for you know helping connect people to chiropractic, and I think those are all very important. One of the things that I still advocate and do in our office regularly is. Um, spinal screenings and talks mm -hmm. because I'm a big advocate that people have to connect with live people face to face. And I know you're big on uh, those as well. Uh, you're focused on that they're an educational booth or an educational opportunity. Can you share a little bit about why that's valuable? Yeah, well, uh, uh, the educational booth system, once again, hallmark program we do with SVE. The educational booth started a long time ago, even before SVE. In, in fact, uh, the screening started you know, back in 1895. I mean, we didn't create this, but it's, it's time tested. And the, what you're, you call the spinal screening, I kind of evolved it more into what I call an educational booth. I'll describe what that means in a moment. But that educational booth, the objective of there is to teach people about what we do. And once again, remember our, our mindset is creating a lifelong practice member who stays, pays, and refers. So when you're explaining chiropractic to a person on the outside uh, and you have that short amount of time, maybe using that 30 second description of chiropractic, you're already kind of planting a seed in their head saying, this is something that I might need and for a lifetime. Now, when they come into your office, and when I have a whole system, I'll, I'll describe the system. It's really easy to describe uh, the educational booth. But when they're coming in from the educational booth, they're actually coming in for the right reason to have their spine checked for misaligned spinal bones. Most of the time when we get a referral in the office or somebody just finds us randomly, 
they're, the catalyst that's driving them into the office is usually some type of therapeutic reason, some type of uh, pain or symptom that drove them to the office and they say, can chiropractic care help with this? And so now you have to take them from that moment in time in your office and then in, in my office, I try to transition them over to a non-therapeutic mindset about chiropractic because that's the thing that's going to keep them there for the whole duration of while you're in, in the office and maybe even beyond you, if, uh, if uh, God willing. But what, what's happening here is the person says, okay, instead of getting my ache or pain or neck pain or headache or whatever the issue is getting resolved or trying to get resolved through chiropractic care, they all of a sudden discover that, oh, I'm coming in to have my spine checked to see if I need to be adjusted. That's where we want to really focus on that. That's the content. Because if you're focusing on anything else, when the, and you've heard this phrase before, when the person's pain goes away, they go away. Right. When the person's pain doesn't go away, they still go away. So no matter what, almost 100% of the time, you're losing that person. But when you give them a reason to return, when you give them a reason to come back, now they're going to last for a whole entire lifetime in your office. And they're going to refer in their, their spouse and their children because the, the catalyst of the symptom is not what's driving this force. Uh, let's circle back to the educational booth now. So there's a, a system involved with this educational booth, and I specifically call educational booth because that's what we're doing. Uh, my mindset is not to get the person. My mindset is not to schedule the person even for the office. My job is to educate them about chiropractic to allow them to make an informed decision if they want this or not. And, I, and once you um, hear the end of the system, you'll say, oh, that makes total sense. Because some people say, oh, I just want to get new people. Well, there's a, a, a mindset that you have to sort of change uh, in your thinking. We're not wanting to get people. That, that, that's, that's sort of like a, a, a bad way to say it. Uh, a better way is I want to educate people, empower them to make an informed decision so they make that choice on their own. I, absolutely. And I, want to, I just want to stay on that point for a moment because this is something that I teach mm -hmm. um, through our lifetime wellness practice programs and inner circle, this concept, which is vital because, um, and I think people need to hear it. It's a universal principle, not for chiropractic, but, but life in general. If you show up to get something, people can smell it. People Absolutely. can feel it. They know it and it repels people. You want to show up with something valuable to give. You know, and that will, when you're there to give something, like you're holding a gift that's so valuable and you're giving it to people, um, that draws people in and attracts people. And it's not just in an educational booth setting, it's online, it's um, in, in your communication in your office, it's in your initial visit, it's, it's in a, a talk that you do in the public, they, they can tell if you're there to get something. Mm -hmm. And it's vital to be conscious of that. You know, let, let's uh, touch on a, a couple of the, the highlights more about this educational booth, yeah. and, and then we'll, we'll, I'll share with them the, the outline, because it, this is all for content for people right. on, on your podcast. Right, right, so, right. So the educational booths have, in my opinion, and it's almost backed up by research too, the very best ROI in the business. That's the return on your investment. I was just teaching this to another member of the Garden State, and- he went out for, um, as a Garden State member, uh, we are a nonprofit organization. So many times when you go as a vendor for um, a, a booth setting, they have a set fee. But when you go in as a nonprofit organization, that fee is almost a third of what the regular booth is. So right. I almost laughed when he told me how much it cost him to, to get this, this vendor spot, we'll say, the educational booth spot. It cost him $25, Daniel. Wow. To, to, to get an educational booth set up at, at this uh, festival. Now, he scheduled from the weekend 33 new people from the event. And so if you're just doing math in your head or people at home listening to this, 30, what's 33 new people for? And he paid $25 to get into the event. Uh, so, so it's pretty incredible, pretty amazing. And that's some of the results that this 
education booth, when done properly, uh, uh, re, um, gives you or, a, as a return. Now, the what we're trying to do is create an educational booth system. It's not a sales booth. So here's the big difference. If it was a sales booth, when you say no to me, uh, let's say we get done checking your spine, it's time for you to make a decision whether you want to have your spine checked or not. And if you say no, a sales booth would say, try to change your mind. Oh, damn, but didn't you hear what I shared with you about chiropractic? You need this. I, I, I need you to come in to get this. So that's called a sales booth. That's not what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is educate the person and to make an informed decision. And so that's the difference. And you were just talking about that. The antennas will go up. We call it the, the BS antennas, where if the BS antennas go up, the people are going to step back and not, not commit right. and not buy from you. But if right. you're trying to give something to them of value, they're going to also know this. So when we're at the educational booth, there's a, a few different points to have a successful educational booth. So that when the person walks up to your booth, there is a walk-up script. And some people don't like script, but you can say, why is it, what it is that you're doing here? So just have a reason why, but you want to use two words mainly in there. You want to use your volunteering your time and your educating the community. Those are two words. Whatever else you say is almost fine, but you want to make sure you're sharing those two points. Because people say in their mind, oh, you're volunteering your time. That means it doesn't cost anything. And education, oh, I'm going to learn something. I'm going to learn something and it's not going to cost me anything. This is for me. That, that's what you say to folks when they walk up to your booth. Now you invite them to come back in and I usually have them sit down in, in a chair and I'm going to educate them about chiropractic. And that's where your 30 second description comes in. So the, remember the outline, how the body works, how the body breaks down, how a chiropractor helps. So I, I use a, a 30 second talk on there. Then after we educate them, we get their permission to say, would you like to have your spine checked now? And 99.9% .9 of the time it's yes. So now we check their spine. After we get done checking your spine, if they have misaligned spinal bones, some people do, some people don't. If they have misaligned spinal bones, you share with them on a, I have a, you remember what the ANS chart is, the autonomic nervous system chart? Yeah. So I have a copy of that and I circle the misaligned spinal bones that I discovered on their spine. I sit right next to them and go over with them one at a time. And then all we have to do is ask them, okay, are you ready to have your misaligned spinal bones adjusted? Or would you like to have your misaligned spinal bones adjusted? And there's different, different ways to say that. If you have a special offer, you can give them a special offer. There's three types of, of modes for these educational booths. There's, if you're in practice and let's say you're younger in practice or, or just getting out, there's hyper growth mode. Then there's what's called slow growth mode. And then there's replacement mode. So hyper growth mode is you want a high volume of new people coming into your office so you can get set up for success. Slow growth mode is maybe you're in the middle of your practice career and you don't necessarily need hyper growth mode, but you want to keep on growing. So I call that slower growth mode. And then replacement mode is let's say you're at the twilight of your career and you just want to replace the people who are, who are leaving you. And so those are different modes that you can practice and you can, um, create different types of plans for the people when they come into your office from that educational booth. So now you're, you're informed the person, you, you maybe gave them an offer, and now all you have to ask them the one question is, would you like to have your misaligned spinal bones adjusted? And you wait for an answer. Most people keep on talking. You have to wait and pause and let them process all the stuff that they just went through, which should only take about five to seven minutes. You're not taking a lot of time with the folks, but that's how long it took to process this person all the way up until this moment in time. Now they're going to say yes or no. This is a yes or no question. Most of the time in big time sales companies, they, don't, they say do not give a person a yes or no question because they have an opportunity to say no. But this is the moment in time where they need to make a decision so you can move on to the next person. You don't miss any other opportunities. So when they say yes, you automatically say, okay, let me grab my appointment calendar and we'll schedule you an appointment. Perfect. Now, when they say no, some people say no, uh, for whatever reason they say no, and there's, there's other reasons I could share with you. But when they say no, all we do is say, okay, here's my card. When you're ready to have your misaligned spinal bones adjusted, I want you to give me a call.
and you let them walk away. Remember, educational booth, not sales booth. Sales booth would try to change their mind. Educational booth, letting them leave with the informed information. And here's what happens. The person is leaving your booth very happy because you didn't try to change their mind on them. And they're leaving knowing that they have misaligned spinal bones, but also knowing that that can break their body down because you just described that in your educational uh, moment. And when they're good and ready on their own time, they will call you because the person, I had people call me even years later saying, Doc, I met you at one of those festival events. I'm ready to have my spine checked now. Can I make an appointment? So that, that's very wonderful when that happens. It happens very often. But the, the key here is now you're not trying to switch their mind. It's a true educational booth. And it's right. not a sales booth. And, and, and so that's where we're going with it. Right. Well, and, and oh, let, let me share one more thing, Danny. Oh, yeah. This is just one moment of time. As we get older in our practices, you might not want to take a weekend off or, or, or a day off to do an educational booth. So what we developed was we hired a lay person and we're testing this. We tested this out. It's all in, you know, in our lab in SVE, but it's, um, we hired a lay person to do exactly what we do, except they can't check the spine. So we figure out a way to, to make the process work, works just the same way. So you can hire a lay person. Once you have this skill set, you teach the lay person to do the educational booth for you. And now you just go out with your time freedom, do whatever you'd like to do and let the lay person run the booth for you mm -hmm. and schedule just as many people. Well, and here's the thing there's something that's vital, which is in a healing profession, people have to, what, one of the things that I've seen is research is how the person selects a doctor or an office is a sense of trust. So yes. that, you know, they connect with you live face to face, and then they feel trusting of this relationship. Um, so I, I really feel is it's vital to make sure that you're connecting live or someone from your team is connecting live with people um, and not just online. You, you, that's, that's vital for part of the healing process. So, yeah. You know, you know one, one of my uh, pet peeves in, in, in my life is when somebody tries to trick me or deceive me in, in some way and I say, oh, this is, this is wonderful. And then you show up and it's, it's not quite what you thought it was. Uh, and so I say, okay, I'm out here. You, you, you know, you either trick me or you lied to me or whatever it is. And I, I, we're starting off on the wrong path. So with these educational booths, what you're showing them on the outside is what you do on the inside. And, and that's vitally important because it's congruent and it's consistent. So Danny, do you know how easy it is to convert a person to a lifelong practice member when they're coming in for the right reasons already? That's why it's, it's one of my favorite ways to bring a new person in uh, is through those educational booths because it's so easy when it comes time for it to show them their care and care plan. It is that you built up a tremendous amount of trust and credibility. So it's, they're like the, the, Bobblehead doll syndrome. Yes, doc. Yes, doc. Yes, right. doc. Let, let's let's just go ahead, doc. I'm ready, doc. Okay. Right. So you're spending you know minutes with them in the care plan time as opposed to trying to you know use sales tactics to try to trick them. Right. Right. And 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 that's what you want. You want to be have this experience that hey, I'm giving you this something, and this is of course what you want, and that's and that we're in a, a, a mutual agreement here. Right. right? Uh, as compared to that not being the case, and you're trying to do something different, which and, is, and, and you know, I just want to share this off. I, I'm, I hope that you can tell my sincerity coming across right. here. And, and most people say I am humble, I'm, I'm humble. But uh, <laughs> Liam Schul told me to, to don't be humble with this point because it's very important that people know this uh, about me. In my office, it's a very, very successful high volume practice and we make a lot of money too so so all these things are the, the skill sets when when i'm teaching the other guard state members or shul vision members or the ifco members about these principles and these strategies it's not coming from a point where it it, it might work sometimes or a little bit of the time it it works tremendously and is tremendously successful and that's how i built this huge family practice that we have in uh franklin park new jersey Absolutely. Absolutely. Now with that, um, uh, people 
her her watching this, listening to this, now know like another reason to be at Mile High is you're going to get to hear from Dr. Frank Hahn. Um, and we're delighted to have you on stage at Mile High. That being said, how can people connect with Shubal Vision Elite uh, more? Where's, where's a place where they can find out more about it? Wonderful. That, that's easy. Uh, ShubalVisionElite.com is uh, the website. And you can go, there's a Facebook group, a private Facebook group, uh, Shubal Vision Seminar Facebook group, as I think six or 7,000 members a part of it so you can get in contact with us there if you want to ask questions before you join the group you can ask them in that that open forum and then we have a private page just like many uh, of the other groups where a lot of our clients are just asking wonderful questions and we answer them in real time excellent excellent well we look forward to seeing you at mile high uh 2020 uh august 20th to 23rd i suggest people check out shubal vision elite um, I'm a member of Shubal Vision Elite. I get a lot of value out of it. And I also want to really, for, for not m just me, but I want to thank um, on behalf of chiropractic, uh, you, Dr. Frank Hahn, for all that you do through, uh, you give of your time, talent, energy, resources to chiropractic via IFCO TV, IFCO, Sherman, the, the Garden State Society, and, and of course in your practice and in so many ways. And, you know, um, for, for, for your life is really a reflection of what you give. Um, so giving is a secret to living. And uh, we really know that you're living a fabulous life because of um, all that you give. Uh, and we are very grateful. Uh, there's many people that would not receive chiropractic care or would not be chiropractors if not for you. Oh, thank you, Danny. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And um, thank you. Truly. So again, uh, if you've been enjoying the Mile High podcast, make sure you hit subscribe, whether it be on Stitcher or YouTube or uh, Facebook or whatever channel that you're listening or watching this so you never miss any Mile High tick. Uh, Dr. Frank, we look forward to seeing you. I know we'll see you there before then, but we look forward to seeing you in August. And uh, thank you for rising up with us every year. Absolutely. You know what, Dan, Mile High is one of my favorite events of, of the whole entire year. I place that on my calendar well ahead of time. It's one of the first things that I do in uh, December or January when I set up my schedule. Uh, and I'll invite this to the whole group because they're, they're listening. Doc, Liam Schubel, and myself go out uh, usually a week early and go hiking somewhere in Colorado. Every year we do this. You're all invited. Sometimes we get people that join us halfway through our trek. Sometimes they, they are with us the whole time, and sometimes it's a, a, a few hours. But, but it's wonderful whenever you meet up with us. Um, we'll take you to dinner. We'll, we'll chit-chat about chiropractic. We just do hiking in the beautiful state of Colorado and talk chiropractic. I mean, it can't be anything better. And then we culminate the journey with Mile High. Yes. And, and I always love seeing the pictures from that whole uh, yes. a journey that you take. There's, <laughs> yeah. there's no Liam's great Colorado. at posting on Facebook. I try to keep up with him, but that's almost impossible. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks again for being on the Mile High podcast, and thank you for all you do for uh, chiropractic. We look forward to seeing you at Mile High. And hey, everyone who's watching and enjoying, you know, make sure you mark on your calendar August 20th to 23rd, uh, and keep changing spines and lives and minds with chiropractic. Be well.